People, after six months of learning web design, of a year of website building and designing and filming, my fitness website and business, workoutways.co.uk, is finally up and running. Do check it out if you're interested in making some awesome health changes. For now, let's talk about how to build muscle. My fitness journey has benefited more from knowledge than any other single factor. Learning what to do to go from this at 136 pounds to this at 140 or this at 180 is a truly fascinating endeavor. And of course, by learning the fundamentals, you can apply them to any goal, regardless of whether it's leanness or bulk, fat loss or weight gain. So I intend this video to be a helpful and potential, potentially new way of understanding muscle building for most people, even those who are quite experienced. I won't be diving deeply into scientific approaches because for most people that's not particularly helpful and beyond that, I myself am not a credible authority from a scientific viewpoint. It's not my area. What I can and will do is simplify and concisely convey my understanding of this topic that has facilitated my progress and hopefully can do the same for you. To begin with, let's start with a handy little mnemonic for remembering the essential components of muscle building. SSS, that is it. SSS, or SSSPOH. This stands for Stimulus, Sleep, Surplus, Protein, Overload, Hydration. Let's go through these, because really, if you can remember SSS, then you're already most of the way to understanding how to build muscle. First S, Stimulus. Stimulus is what triggers muscle protein synthesis, or MPS. It's what starts your body creating muscle. It's your resistance training, your lifting, it's work. Second S, surplus. Surplus, in this case, refers to calories. We've talked in other videos about the fact that your body is energy. And in order for your body to build new tissue at its optimal rate, it requires excess. Surfeit, surplus, an excess of energy, or in this case, of calories. Third S, sleep. This is fairly self-explanatory, though in this context, sleep can be synonymous with rest. Not necessarily time that you are asleep, but days and times when you are not providing a stimulus to your muscle, but giving time for rest and recuperation. Do remember that you do not grow while applying a stimulus to a muscle. You grow while that muscle is recovering from said stimulus. Fourth letter in SSS. P. Protein. Protein is one of the two key factors in muscle tissue itself. The other also being included in this mnemonic. There are various schools of thought on how much protein you require. Regardless, protein is an essential component of muscle tissue. Oh, overload. Overload refers to progression. Often termed progressive overload within the fitness world, this means essentially lifting more over time. As you get stronger, as you, your muscles get more used to a stimulus, that stimulus will become less effective at triggering a response. Overload is about increasing the value, severity, or magnitude of that stimulus as you become more capable. Final letter H, hydration. Water is the second key factor in muscle tissue. Combined with protein, these two play an essential role in both the maintenance and construction of new muscle. SSS, stimulus, sleep, surplus, protein, overload, hydration. Remember those terms. Get them all right and you will grow like never before. Knowing these key factors can also help you be more likely skeptical of bullshit fitness myths that are out there like the anabolic window or assorted bollocks. Now, here is where I'm going to simplify a lot of things because muscle building as a topic and human anatomy and people in general is incredibly nuanced. But nuanced knowledge is always more easily learned at top of basis of foundational principles, as I make clear in this World of Tanks related video. Nuanced and specific knowledge is built upon foundational knowledge. 
For example, imagine that this water is when you play college, right? And this hand is your brain. Without foundational knowledge, this happens. Right? But if you understand the basics, the principles, the why you should or shouldn't act, right, presented in this case by this bowl, suddenly you can build nuanced and specific knowledge upon a firm foundation. So do be aware that examples, numbers that I cite in the coming section aren't meant to be exact. They serve to demonstrate the concepts that I'm trying to convey. Because I, I'm about to try and explain quite a complex idea as perceptibly as possible so that you'll be able to comprehend how it relates to you and your life, your training and your goals. First term you should understand. MPS. This stands for Muscle Protein Synthesis. Think of this as the process by which your body creates new muscle. It does this as a response to a stimulus. Typically, this stimulus is resistance training, lifting weights. After this stimulus, while you rest and recover, your body is in a state of MPS, or building new muscle, for a certain period of time the magnitude and length of which likely correlated with the severity of the stimulus. E.g. you work harder, more MPS, more muscle, right? Now beginners, as in people not accustomed to resistance training, can stay in a state of MPS for longer than experienced ones. This is why experienced trainees tend to have to train more frequently. Second and final term. MSL. So we've got MPS, which is muscle protein synthesis or building muscle, and MSL. This stands for muscle synthesis limit. This is a rough limit of how much muscle your body is capable of creating in a given time period. In beginners, this is somewhere around four pounds per month for men, up to two pounds per month for women. Experienced trainees can expect these numbers to be halved. Now, these two terms are very obviously correlated, but the way their principles interface with our ideal training is fascinating. For the purposes of this concept demo, we'll assume that in a human being, MPS is binary. It's either yes or it's no. You are either building muscle or you are not. This is obviously far more nuanced in reality, but bear with me. Let's remember that you don't build muscle while giving said muscle a stimulus. You build muscle while recovering from said stimulation. Benefited and enabled by the other factors in SSS. Oh, I messed that up. It's clear that in order to grow at the optimal rate, we want MPS to be yes as often as possible. This requires that we apply a triggering stimulus at regular intervals to essentially turn it on again, if you like. Imagine a switch. This switch activates a money printing machine. When you flick this switch, the machine prints money. Doesn't matter how on this switch is, this machine can only print money so fast. And every time you turn on this switch, it starts a timer of 48 hours, if you like, before it switches off again. At which point you need to flick it back on to get more money. This can be likened to the concept I'm trying to convey here. Everyone in this analogy can see the pointlessness of hitting this switch harder to try and get this machine to make more money. It won't work. And in worst case scenario, you hit the switch too hard, the switch breaks or you break your hand and you won't be able to turn it on again when it switches off. In this analogy, the switch is MPS. The machine is your body, limited by MSL. And the money is muscle. No matter how hard you work, the MSL is still the same. The physical light at which the cells in your body can construct new muscle is still the same. Let's take a beginner. Assume that they trigger MPS for the next 48 hours. Once they trigger that state, you 
could say that anything beyond that, conceptually, is diminishing returns in our flawed analogy where MPS is binary, because their MPS will only ever last a limited amount of time, regardless of how hard they train. There is that hard limit of MPS. And within that limit, the body can only build so much in that time before the MPS stops. Now, does this mean you shouldn't train hard? No, absolutely not. Because in reality, MPS can be triggered to different magnitudes. And if you're not challenging yourself, then it won't be triggered at all. But what you should keep in mind is that even if you get to the gym and you take everything you set to failure, you go absolutely ham, you rock the world of the gym. The longest amount of time you can theoretically benefit from that in terms of MPS is 48 hours. And within that 48 hours, your body can only build so much before the MPS stops and it requires a new stimulus to turn it back on again. And if at that point you are too fatigued or unable to apply that stimulus again, then you are wasting time. So while effort and going hard in the gym is absolutely better for triggering MPS to a greater degree of severity, there is a golden balance to be struck between intensity, volume, and efficiency that triggers optimal MPS, but also leaves you adequately rested and recovered to train again once that MPS stops. The key thing then is consistency. Because regardless of how hard you train in one session, your body can only ever build a limited amount of muscle as a result of that one stimulus. If you train so hard in a session that you can only train that movement one time per week, let's say you acquire 48 hours of MPS at 100% of your MSL value over that week. Just a reminder, MPS is your body growing muscle, MSL is the limit on how much muscle can be grown. That's 192 hours over the month that your body is in MPS, meaning that by estimate your body will be able to synthesize 1.06666 occurring pounds of muscle in that time. But if instead you lighten the workload so that you can recover quicker, trigger less MPS, but more often, let's say in this example you trigger 36 hours of MPS at only 80% of your MSL, but you do it three times a week. That'll be 432 hours in the month with the MPS active, allowing your body mathematically to synthesize 1.92 pounds of muscle tissue. Now, of course, there's a lot of assumptions made here, a great deal of nuance deducted. But hopefully it will make the concept clear to you that above all else, consistency over an extended period matters infinitely more than one gym session. Over the same week, going mental in one session is objectively worse than going hard in three. Now let's talk about nuance. Practicality. Theory is all well and good, but nuance is important. I've been referring to MPS as a state, as if your body as a whole is just magically growing muscle when in this state. That is, of course, fallacious. Muscle growth, MPS, is correlated with and local to an applied stimulus. If you do bicep curls, your quads aren't going to suddenly start growing, right? This is why, in the gym world, trainees will separate days into different muscle groups. With the idea being, you try to get MPS in the biceps and triceps, while they recover, try to get MPS in the legs. While they recover, try to get MPS in the chest. It's a very smart method of allowing muscles adequate time for recovery whilst incorporating the volume and stimulus required for optimal progression. Now, there are many different splits, many different schools of thought. There are some who advocate doing push movements, then pull movements, then legs. There are some who say that Monday is chest day. In reality, the best split is one that covers your whole body throughout the week, ideally at least twice a week, and works well for you. My schedule, personally, looks like this. 
You can see how it's composed to give muscle groups adequate time to recover, whilst having enough variation to facilitate progression in different compound movements, such as chin-ups on back and biceps day, close grip bench press and dips on chest and triceps. Is it the best split in the world? No, absolutely not, but it works well for me, and it allows me to stay consistent, and that's the most important thing. Let's call back to SSS and go over how these components interact with the knowledge that we've just gained. Because if we can get these six components right, we will grow muscle. Stimulus. The trigger, the switch that activates MPS and starts your muscle machine synthesizing. This is most often accomplished through resistance training, be that body weight or weight training, the key being that you have to apply a significant enough stimulus to a muscle or muscle group to trigger MPS, but not so significant that you injure yourself or take too long to recover. Sleep. Rest. Just as important as any other factor. I'll say again, you do not grow while you are in the gym. You grow while you are recovering, and allowing muscle groups adequate time to recover is essential. It presents in the way I build my programs, and it's essential for understanding how muscle builds in general. Beginners to resistance training are in luck here. Uh, they may well require more or less due to DOMS, which is delayed onset muscle soreness, but as we discussed earlier, their muscles can stay in a state of MPS for longer, as opposed to an experienced trainee, meaning that they have to train less often for these same results, or sometimes even greater results. It's why the term newbie gains exists. This is why many people, myself included, recommend that when starting out, you train three days a week. These three days should be focused on progressing big compound movements that work multiple muscle groups for maximum efficiency. Surplus. Food. When we're looking to build muscle, there are considerations to be made. If you are a beginner or you're overweight, gaining muscle while losing fat may be possible and a route you wish to explore. But a natural human being can not grow muscle at their maximum MSL whilst they are in a caloric deficit. Food is important for fueling your workouts as well as giving your body the material it needs to construct new muscle. Being in a slight caloric surplus where you're gaining perhaps half a pound per week will allow you to grow muscle at your optimal rate while not piling on excess weight. This is why bulking and cutting is common in trainees. The idea being that within a bulking phase, a trainee will eat to gain weight, take the inevitable amount of fat that comes with it, and then at a particular point of their choosing go into a cutting phase where they aim to keep the muscle they built and lose the fat, rinse and repeat. One of the most effective ways for a natural human to pursue an impressive physique long term. Protein. Protein, one of the key components of muscle. A diet rich in protein is important for optimal gains, and a common school of thought seems to be that 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight is enough to grow optimally, and my experience does concur with that conjecture. Overload. Overload ties directly into stimulus. The correlation between magnitude and length of MPS and severity of a stimulus has been talked on. But bottom line, as you get stronger, you will need to lift heavier weight to trigger the same result. There are many different progression options. Weight training obviously offers uh, desirable advantages in that regard. Within body weight training, uh, Progressive overload tends to happen somewhat naturally. Uh, if you go at 100% effort and you do 15 push-ups one week, you got 100% effort the next week and you do 16, by nature you have overloaded that movement. The progression schemes I generally use in weight training involve either a targeted number of reps for three sets, allowing me to go to failure on each set, or completing a set number of reps with a particular weight before graduating to the next one and resetting the rep range. The principle being that we keep increasing the stimulus to generate the same 
NPS. Hydration. Water is a critical component for muscle, as well as hydration being healthy overall. A drink of water with every meal and aiming to drink enough so such that your urine is relatively clear is a good target to aim for. SSS, remember it. Let's talk about supplementation. First, to clear up any misconceptions, supplements are not steroids. To make that 100% clear, supplements are things like creatine monohydrate, whey protein, casein powder, that kind of thing. In essence, supplements are things that aid or assist your dietary or training needs. They are not steroids. For example, a 200 pound guy may be looking to hit 3,800 calories per day. And maybe his day has gone a bit awry, he's missed a meal or something like that. When he realizes that he isn't going to hit his targets, it can use a, a meal supplement, such as uh, whey protein or casein powder, uh, to make up the calories that he's missed, and also the macros. He can mix it up in two minutes to make sure that he can stay on target. They aren't right, shakes! Whey and casein are types of protein. The exact same protein found in cow's milk. They contain essential amino acids that your body can't make, and they perform the exact same function that a good old chicken breast would. The main appeal is the ease of tracking, the ease of consumption, uh, and overall convenience with them being able to hit macro or calorie goal with a simple supplement in a fraction of the time that it would otherwise take to prepare. They are not steroids! Creatine monohydrate is one of the most widely researched supplements on the market. It's a training aid that essentially increases the body's ability to provide energy during exercise. They are not steroids! Some people have trouble gaining weight and would benefit from a weight gain powder to assist with that. That's what supplementation is. So if you have anyone who is confused or have people jumping out of their seats when they you tell them that you're, you want some whey protein or, or creatine monohydrate, you know what to tell them. Let's quickly cover cardio in relation to muscle building. Now, cardio does trigger different adaptations from the body than resistance training. And those two processes can overlap and they can interfere with each other. Now, does this mean you shouldn't do cardio? No, absolutely not. And in my opinion, the whole cardio is killing your gains thing for most people is ridiculously overblown. But it is prudent to separate cardio-focused training and resistance training into different days or separate sessions to reduce the chance of one impeding on the other. Now a word on DOMS, or Delayed Onset Muscle Soreness. This occurs when you subject a muscle or muscle group to a new or unfamiliar stimulus or fatigue. And while it is correlated with muscle growth, it is not essential to it. DOMS is far more common than people new to a particular movement or training in general. And it's easy to think the next day or next two days, oh, this is so painful, I must be building so much muscle. Whereas in reality, DOMS and MPS are not the same thing. You're likely to notice as you become more experienced, both in general and with specific movements, that DOMS is experienced less and less. But this does not mean that MPS is not being triggered. Now, there are different types of resistance training, and different protocols and hip schemes and progressions. Best practices differ based on different goals. If training for strength uh, tends to merit lower rep ranges with greater rest times, endurance the opposite, uh, hypertrophy training, muscle size to simplify it somewhere in the middle, where you're three sets of 12, for example. But all of these training protocols, you have to understand, they are unified under the principles that I've just described. All of them are slaves to what I've just told you about. All of them are limited, guided, and enhanced by them. And it's my hope with this understanding you can better relate and rationalize your knowledge uh, to program for yourself or optimize your training considerations and information to make your goals easier to achieve. So let's talk practicality. 
If you want to make similar changes to me, what do I recommend? Step one, be objective about what is best for you. Decide if you want to focus on bulking or you want to cut. It is extremely important that you have an objective in mind because it allows you to plan specifically for it. Now, if you are excessively overweight to the point that it makes body weight or even weight training impractical, then building muscle is likely not the wisest use of your time. You should focus on getting yourself to a healthy weight. See my how to lose weight video linked in the description or on the workoutways.co.uk homepage for advice. But if you're fairly healthy and think you benefit from adding muscle to your frame, let's focus on that. I recommend you download My Fitness Pal, which is a funny calorie counting app. And depending on your objective that you put into it, it will give you an idea of how much you need to eat to head towards that chosen weight. In correlation with everything that we've talked about here, it's extremely helpful. Step two, get a good training program. As a beginner, having a guide to get you started is extremely helpful, not just for direction, but for safety as well. There are many, 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 many programs out there. I, recommend, I do recommend my programs over at workoutways.co.uk because they are built based on this knowledge. They offer three, four, or five-day options, uh, workouts for your home or the gym, workouts with no equipment or full equipment, and purchase of any one of my programs grants you access to a resource page which contains a read-through guide of of your entire program, full video guides of every one of your workouts, full form guides of every exercise in your program, all organized in one place so that you never feel lost during a workout. In time and with experience, you'll be able to design your own plans to work towards whatever goal you have in mind. But when starting out, a good plan that incorporates all of this knowledge is incredible. Step three, incorporate SSS. I did it that time. Once you have a workout program, you can complement that program massively by adherence to the six components of muscle building. Eat in a caloric surplus, sleep eight hours every night, work hard but not too hard in the gym, 0.8 to 1, 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight, Overload your workouts, which if you get a workout plan from workoutways.co.uk, your overload is built into the program itself, so that's nice. Stay adequately hydrated throughout the day. Do all of these things and you absolutely will build muscle. And that's it. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Do check out the Workout Ways website for guided programs and even custom programs and plans to achieve a particular goal. Workout Ways is designed for the average person who has no idea really how to work out, and it will have you feeling comfortable with the guided approach that I take to workouts. Other than that, see the other videos in the Essentials playlist. We've got how to lose weight and how to get a six-pack uh, for more crucial information that you can use to benefit your life and your training. Uh, best of luck in your fitness journey.